after high school, he continued the practice of martial arts and keeping himself athletically inclined. He was involved with many impressing successful moves in life, such as earning his degree in computer science. After Epiphany, finally deci he decided to enter into the military. Scoring very high on his ASVAB test was a natural thing for him. He desired a challenge. He then submitted a 4187 special ops training. While awaiting for the approval, he entered explosive ordinance in combat yeah, arms. He was asking me if I had turned it on. Do you have it on? Uh, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Tazadak finally received the opportunity to train in the special ops he started, that he st started running covert operations in Central Operations and in South America, Costa Rica, Panama, and Bolivia, which he, which he notices that most of the people he were uh, fighting were of his own. And these operations were actually people that resembled him, but he went on to participate in two of their wars. Tazidak made a covenant with the Most High that it, he actually got him out of this situation that he would never participate in another war again. Tazidak was introduced to the teachings of Islam taught by Malcolm X, who was taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was also taught by Farrakhan, and studying his lectures and listening to material, you can say that he came into connection with his roots. And he decided that the military was no longer for him. He discovered that during those covert operations, he decided to tell the military that his conscience was against, was against it now. When he went to war, he actually affiliated with a Muslim brother who had told him, who taught him to speak Arabic, and he embraced the mainstream Islam, which he considered to study for the next 10 years with Dr. Khalid Muhammad. He submitted a conscience objector to the military and sent him to chaplain's psychiatric to determine if he was sane or not, but he passed it Nevertheless, he submitted a 32-page report along with the conscience objector, and they decided to let him out of the military with honorable discharge, still having three more years in the military duty. With his military duty contract, that is what he was there for. He actually learned contract law and that laws and contracts are amenable. When he was released from the military, he received the GI Bill. Going back to New York, he decided to go to a private college and major in computer science, which he graduated. After he graduated, he realized he was exceeding, it was exceedingly hard to obtain a job because the employers were saying that he has a degree, but he does not have the experience. So he started to study for Microsoft Certified System Engineering, and he passed all seven tests and became the Microsoft Certified System Engineer, which is top of the charts on teaching and knowing how to build computers and how to repair them. From there, he started to work for major corporations such as Dell, Verizon, IBM, and he also went to Mount Sinai Hospital, working for the IT department. From there, he advanced to the position of coordinator manager at Kings County. Tazadak is highly intelligent, and his passion is for the study of contract law. Being in situations of his own, he learned how the law is performed, and as a creditor, and take action for himself, and not let anyone to govern him. He now teaches us the valuable information. Tazadak is a true standout in this field. He is known for his wit and his teaching skills. He has a great understanding of contract law and a great appreciation of his passion to help others. Tazadak opens eyes to successfully govern yourselves rather as a debtor and allowed to be governed by others. 
Father Doc is consistent and exceptionally awarded to continue his path in progress and a, re and a remarkable vision of the future in professional, as a professional author, motivational speaker, life coach, and entrepreneur. Finally, Tazadak is an astonishing person, and we are all in a treat today. Without no further ado, I am honored to bring forth Tazadak Shah. Can you get the mic to take out? No. And so she's going to start with that. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Let's see. Let this work this little girl. Is it on? Yeah, you just got to hold There's a power button. Yeah. She, okay. No, it should still be on. Yeah, she it. Testing. It's on. Hello? Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> Predators Conference, Secure Party Predators, Summer Redemption. Disclaimer, the information provided in this seminar, online, in our video, in our documents, or viva voce, is not to be taken as legal advice. It is for educational, informational, or entertainment purposes only. If you need legal advice, seek yourself a competent attorney, lawyer, counsel, and please be advised. If you decide to use any of our information, you do so at your own will and will assume all responsibility. We are all. We are not suggesting that you use any of our information. Yeah. So just let's like just stop right there. Can we kind of get like familiar with everybody in the room? Can we get people to introduce themselves? I like to be familiar with who I'm talking to. Um, any agents in the room? Federal agents? Anyone that works for the federal government? Anyone like that? No one. <coughs> okay. Can you introduce them. Can you stand up and introduce yourself? Can I get that mic? Yeah. Thanks. I am Shandor Wayne Young Jr. You gotta get a little confident. You, you gotta look at people when you're talking to them. You can't be shy. That's a sign of weakness. I am Shandor Wayne Young Jr. But you gotta speak with authority as well. You need a little more bass in your voice. Sorry, what you should. Sure. Sure. <coughs> I am Shadow Wayne Young Jr. Oh, yes. All right, yeah, that's better. Yeah. All right. And the kid over here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Ernesto Barrett. Um, grew up in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm an MBA graduate from Florida and m University. Right now, between careers, uh, just finishing pharmaceutical sales and uh, about to switch into um, doing sales for a company called Enicon in the next month. So right now, I'm trying to learn as much as I can about being a secure party creditor, um, you know, having credit for my own small business, and uh, going from there. Thank you. <coughs> Shalom. 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 Uh, my name is Jonathan Waring. I'm here from here, Philly, and I'm self-employed, and I've been following Tasha Doc on, on YouTube, and very interested in what he has to say, and that's why I'm here. Interested from what degree? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> very interested in what I have to say. That seems a little bit scary. A little bit suspicious. Well, I'm right? I'm I'm interested, interested in becoming a secure party creditor. Okay, okay. And, um, <laughs> And, and you know, just learn with the state your entrance. Oh, this is Christian. Tristan. Tristan. With the T. Yeah. Uh, Tristan Dyer. I'm here from uh, Dallas, Texas. Flew in last night for for this, and I've been following uh, Tesla Doc for uh, well since February this year, and. Um, I was building a business all last year, uh, doing real estate, and figuring, you know, this doesn't have to be, this can't be this hard. So I uh, came across Tesla Doc as I was looking for uh, how to get rid of my social security number. Um, so uh, I've been following him and been kind of living and breathing this uh, this stuff. How is that working out for you though with the real estate? Uh, real estate's kind of on hold. I've been just living and breathing, uh, studying. Uh, party and 
um, all of the steps, finding out the answers, um, working towards it right now. Shalom. 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 Khadija Haynes from, I'm originally born and raised in, in uh, Neptune, New Jersey. However, I reside in Washington, D.C. I'm very interested in secure crime. And I was referred by uh, Michael Hassan. Oh, all right. And I'm recently connecting with you on Instagram. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he told me he was going to be here one of these days, either today or tomorrow. Yes. But that's speculation. Good morning, Wes. I'm from uh, Doylestown originally, but living up there in Allentown now. I'm about 10 years into the process. Uh, started uh, under Tim Turner, basically. He's in jail, and then uh, studied with some guys in uh, California. That's the new president of the Republic, Tim Turner. Yes, he was, and now he's in jail. Um, fortunately, if you look at his indictment, you can see all the, the shortcomings that he had, at any rate. Uh, uh, so it's Gordon Moore. Pardon? But it sure is Gordon Hoover, but that's, it doesn't mean he wasn't teaching the truth. Oh, that's correct. Gordon Hoover got railroaded. I, I, I would agree with you. He had some uh, defects and they, they uh, capitalized on him, I would say. Yes. So uh, I've been doing this for a while, so I've probably about three or four processes in, and uh, a colleague sent me your contact information, and he had a couple uh, points of interest during the seminar, so I wanted to attend to uh, observe right. those processes. Hi everyone, my name is Roberto Esposito, I'm from Hamilton, New Jersey, and I guess more than anything, uh, I'm, I'm a recent, I guess a believer of uh, God, Jesus, Yeshua, and uh, more than anything, I'm trying to piece together the historical bits of what I'm reading to how how this all, I'm still kind of lost as to why I'm really here, I don't, I don't really know, right. but I am here. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> I remember reading a book by Dr. Miles Monroe, and he talks about this idea of kingdom and of government, and how somewhere along the line we messed it up and we try to kind of govern ourselves. And so the ideas that Tazadak has shared on his YouTube channel really struck me, and I'm just, I'm interested, but only for the good parts of the interest right. of that. And uh, so I'm here. Hope we all get what we for. I'm out for you. Call me out. I'm just here to be secure by the Just call me out, huh? Yeah, just call me All out. Right, we'll just call you out. But you missed this one right here. Yeah. We, we skipped over oh. these people. Right? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Deborah Wall. Um, I'm from South Jersey, and um, just here to learn about how to become a secure by the Right to, to your to your right. To your left. Your left. <laughs> Hi, good day. I'm Maria Figaro. Um, I'm still on the plantation. I brought it together off. That's um, just yeah, I'm still on the plantation. Um, I do have prior military service. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I met right. you <laughs> a few weeks ago. Um, I've been following him since. Um, um, last November, Thanksgiving, you know, everything just clicked. Mm -hmm. I woke up and I'm ready to get off the plantation, that is. Okay. Keep the G ready. Hi, I'm Anna Figaro. I'm actually with Maria's sister. But matter, matter of fact, I met her at the, at the junction in Brooklyn. <laughs> yes, we're from Brooklyn. <laughs> and then um, I'm here for all the information and all the knowledge I could. You know, intake, and I hope everybody will achieve what they come here to achieve as well. Right. Here to support my sister as well. <laughs> Give it to the G in the back. All right, all right. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Richard, this is Michelle, and this is Lena. Uh, we're from Mississippi, and uh... Right. How come you don't have that good old Southern Mississippi accent? Well, because, you know, <laughs> I've been actually moving around the country for a while, so I kind of lost it a little bit. I hear a little bit. I hear it. There it is, there it is, okay. I was trying not to bring it out, so you know, But yeah, from Mississippi, I uh, lived in uh, several different places, and I uh, came in contact with this information uh, after starting the spiritual journey and uh, most I led me here and uh, here we are.
All right. So yeah, that's it. We can continue on. Oh no, we got new. Oh. Came in. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, they came in. We we yep. we're required to speak. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Excuse us being late for that quick traffic. My name is Kamun Kared. Uh, this is Akinas Bay. Uh, we're here to just for the knowledge and understanding. Gotcha. Thank you. Can, can we get uh, some participation from your um, your associate? Greetings, everyone. I'm Yaya Bay. <coughs> what, what about the Moore sister there, good brother? Can you hand it to mine? The cameraman. We, we forgot the cameraman. Right. You got to tell us about your little incident coming up here. <laughs> he had a little, um, <laughs> a little bit of communication with uh, um, some constables on patrol coming from Atlanta. What? Oh yeah, I got to get you. <laughs> Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Shane. Hey, he'll be on the talk show radio show with uh, me as well. The senior type, all right. Uh, as my son was practicing his uh, manliness over there, junior. But um, we did uh, travel in our conveyance up from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, I got stopped in South Carolina. So I didn't initially stop. I was, you know, looking around, making sure, okay, it's for me. I pulled over by a exit, you know, in case things, you know, get crazy. There's no need to tow my vehicle. I'm not in an unsafe spot. So, uh, you know, I rolled down the window a little bit. He asked me if I have any ID. Uh, and I was like, yes, what's the nature of the stop, sir? He was like, oh, well, uh, you know, you were speeding. Um, going over 100. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, you got any... Uh, you know, you don't have a driver's license. I was like, I do. So I opened up my wallet, started going through all my cars, showing it to him a little bit. You know, we got the light on, no license. I was like, ah, man, I don't have my license on me. I was like, but I have my birth certificate in the trunk. He's like, nah, I don't want that. You have anything with your picture on it. So I gave him an expired debit card from back when I was in North Carolina. And he asked my birthday, went away, came back, and, uh, he asked me to come out the car. <laughs> I guess he didn't want to talk to me in front of my son. Uh, so he's like, well, before we, you know, get started, you know, are you some kind of sovereign citizen or something? I take a step back. I'm like, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. He was like, you're not part of the Moorish community or, uh, you know, Moore's Nation or, you know, Malcolm X. So they got those people in a box. Who you ready? know, and I was like, I'm not, I was like, I know about Malcolm X from school. I was like, but I have no idea, of, you know, about those other things. He was like, let, let me ask you this. Are you a United States citizen? It's like, well, I am an American national. He's like, well, that answers my question. And it starts scratching, you know. And when was the last time anyone gave out a written <laughs> ticket, by the way? And I was just like, what in the world was going on? I was like, sir, well, what, what, how can I help you? Well, what, what do you need? And then he asked me if I have any identifying marks or any uh, anything that shows proof that I own a vehicle because I don't have a traditional tag. So my tag is private and in borders it says not for commercial use, no driver's license, no insurance required. <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, by this time, uh, he had a guy uh, as backup to come on, younger dude. Um, so he's, you know, snooping around my car, looking inside of it, checking my VIN number and all that. Uh, so I was like, well, you know there was like a Mustang right next to me. And then he cuts me off. Now I know 
how the Mustangs go. I can tell the difference between the two and all this. I was like, oh, uh, so I can feel, okay, he doesn't want me to ask questions. He doesn't want me to say anything. I was like, okay. So I take a step back. He's like, our ideals do not match, and they are different. Don't make this any harder than what it needs to be. But I'm going to need you to slow down, okay? <laughs> and the guy's like, the new guy, he's like, hey, so where are you going? I was like, oh, I'm heading to Philly, you know, going to a seminar. Oh, really? For what? 49 USC. And then, <laughs> something, <laughs> and then something clicked with the, uh, with the, senior, the, officer. With the senior officer. And uh, he was like, what's that? You know, the young guy said, what's that? The senior officer was like, ah, I got it. I'll, I'll, I'll get him straight. You know, I want us to leave here with a positive experience. You know, I'm tired, da, da, da. And he gives me a piece of paper that says warning on the top. He scratched out the race section that said black. I guess when I told him I was an American national, he scratched that out. But he was just like, you know, I just need you to slow down. I was like, very, very well. You know, and I went on my, went on my way. But they, they had some sort of charging instrument. You mentioned something like that, right? Uh, uh, they gave me a warning ticket. Oh, so they said that I had a warrant out for my arrest in Georgia. I was like, really? I was like, let me borrow your pen. What county is that in? Because you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll write it down. And he wrote down Fayette County. So you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'll go handle that when I get back. Appreciate it. And then went on my way. Yes, that is it. So. Yeah, usually they're yeah, I don't even know. Like that. Now, now I'm, I, I don't get in any kind of trouble. Okay, I'm very cooperative. Uh, I, I know people. I, you know, I pick up on you know emotions and spirits and things like that. I'm not into anything. I got children. I have something to live for. So this whole warrant thing, I'm not exactly sure what that's about. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to get paid for it. But I'm just you know just putting that out there. I, I don't do anything you know weird and outlandish or anything like that. I might, I might climb up the side of a building or a couple trees. But, um, you know, I was calm, you know, the whole time. I made eye contact, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, friendly and, you know, approachable. I wasn't trying to be, uh, you know, a smart aleck. Even, you know, I possibly could. I've been um, following uh, Tazak for about a year and a half, going on two years. Before that, I was looking into it um, uh, amongst others and uh, with myself for about six months. So. I know a lot about different things, and I'm closing in on how I want to move. But I'm just saying that because they don't want any trouble with us, really. Especially if you intelligently like put out that you know exactly you know what you're doing. So they didn't have a license, they didn't have a registration, which means they could not force me to do business. And left me with you know a warning and I was friendly about it so you know creating harmony is the key and you know knowing how to move yeah mind state is very important awesome. yeah give him a hand for that hand for that hand for that so I let this commit this now if you would hey y'all so no recording we don't want any of that in there no recording of I want anybody Mic check, mic check, mic check. No recording is allowed at this seminar, audio or video, by cell phone or otherwise. No eating <clears throat> is allowed, alcohol or drugs. No weapons of any kind. Please respect the speaker or the person talking. Do not steal or touch anything here that is not yours. So let, let's, we, we skipped over something. This is a private meeting. We reserve the rights to charge, to change the entry fee at the door and refuse entrance to non-members. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. So let all things be done in decency and order. All right, next slide. Sorry about that. First and far, foremost, giving all praises to the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that without him, none of his, this work would be possible. Everything that is spoke here today is rooted in the word. Let's begin by saying James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Psalm 111.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Thus praises, his praise endures forever. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon those that keep his commandments.
commandment and do his works. Isaiah 11, 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. At this point, you can be of this world, of Yah. If you are at this seminar today, God is calling you out of this world, but you will be utterly hearkened of listening to naysayers. <clears throat> John 15, 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because we are not of this world, of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. This explains why many of your family members and peers assume you are crazy for learning this right knowledge. Therefore, all those that act as if they hate you really hate the Lord. John 7, 7, King. The world cannot hate you, but it hateth. But me it hateth, because I testify of it, and the works thereof are evil. Okay, so this is kind of what he was saying when he didn't really say it specifically like that, but that's what he was actually kind of actually um, provided to this um, officer, a constable on patrol. He had the right mindset. A person with a debtor's mindset would have actually handled that differently and ended up in some sort of uh, probably being taken down to some precinct or something. But go ahead with that. The right mindset. Tazadak and other people have successfully used these instruments to discharge debt, but that doesn't mean that you will be able to achieve the same results. The outcome you receive depends largely upon you. In order for any remedy to work, you need more than information. You need understanding, which only you can provide. It is not enough to merely use the information. You must understand what you are doing and why you're doing it. You must provide the understanding, determination, persistence, and courage to apply the information correctly. In other words, you must have the personal character necessary to make any solution work. You must own, internalize, the knowledge and be able to effectively use and apply it to be truly successful. This is why you will need all of Tazadak's books. So, how can you develop your own understanding and character? Only you can answer that question. Each person must follow their own path to develop understanding and character. I will propose you undertake this journey with a long-term commitment to honesty, truth, integrity, and justice. These are matters of the heart and or spirit. The heart can easily be deceived by selfish desires. So I recommend that you use something other than your own wishes as the plumb line by which you judge your heart. I propose that you use the Bible for this purpose although you may be more comfortable with some other standard. I would also advocate that you find others with a similar belief system whom you give permission to ask the tough, probing questions about your motives and intent to help guard, your, help guard you against self-deception. You must guard against a desire for quick personal advantage or getting something for nothing. If you use the information provided here and in greater detail <clears throat> elsewhere, you lose in a given situ situation. This will not mean the war is over that your efforts went unrewarded. The failed attempt may well be part of your journey towards the understanding and character that you will require to eventually win the war and gain pers greater personal freedom. Personal freedom is well, well worth fighting for, so be determined and not give up at the first setback or unexpected results. Okay, let's stop here for a second. Let me just interject. So anything that's actually going to be provided here today is not suggested that anyone use. If you do so, you do so at your own free will, and you're responsible for your own shortcomings. So nothing is actually to be misconstrued as legal advice. It's strictly for educational informational purposes only. So anything that I say, Shenador, um, K.O., Rachel, or Yaya, is not to be misconstrued as legal advice. Well, Jimmy, so with that being said, can someone tell me the difference between a bill of exchange and a promissory note? Does anyone know the difference between a bill of exchange and a promissory note? Anyone know what a promissory note is? Go ahead, brother. What was your name again, brother? Richie. Richie. Okay. How can I get that, bro? Communicate with you over the tone. I promise sorry, no, Just, I never put a face to the name, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, promise sorry, no, is a promise to pay. Right. And a uh, bill of exchange is, uh, is a bill drawn up in exchange off of something already uh, off of uh, a commodity or a uh, uh, good. 
that right. and it's used to, uh, as a, yeah, used to a financial, as a financial instrument. Right. So, so what, 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 what I was actually really looking for, like people that typically use a promissory note, uh, a debtor could use a promissory note. But the difference is a promissory note is a promise to pay, but the bill of exchange is an order to pay. So you're giving someone an order to pay. So that's the distinct difference. So go ahead, my thing. Now we turn our attention to the bill of exchange. You might be wondering where people got the idea of using a bill of exchange. The idea came from the Federal Reserve publication. Modern monetary systems have a fiat base, literally money by decree, with depository institutions acting as fiduciaries, creating obligations against themselves, with the fiat base acting in part as reserves. The decree appears on the currency notes. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. While no individual could refuse to accept such money for debt repayment, exchange contracts could easily be composed to the war its use in everyday commerce. However, a forceful explanation as to why money is accepted is that the federal government requires it as payment for tax liabilities. Anticipation of the need to clear this debt creates a demand for the pure fiat dollar. Money, Credit, and Velocity Review, May 1982, Bottom 64, Number 5, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, page 25. The Federal Reserve is saying that the people could easily replace the use of Federal Reserve notes in daily life by using exchange contracts. This is a very interesting idea. It means that we can use exchange contracts to discharge our debts. Everyone got that part right there? Oh yeah. That's They're saying that. We didn't say that, they said that. All right, next slide. So what is an exchange contract? The legal dictionaries do not give a definition for exchange contract. So let's see what the words mean individually. Contract, an agreement between two or more persons which creates an obligation to do or not to do a particular thing. And it's essential are competent parties, subject matter, a legal consideration, mutuality of agreement, and mutuality of obligation. Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. Hey, yeah, yeah, you, you got your fourth? Yeah. Can you look that up in, in the fourth? And it may read a little bit different. Okay, go ahead, Dale. Exchange, to barter, to swap, to part with, give, or transfer an equivalent. Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. Exchange, the payment. So let, let me ask a question. Let's so, um, the, the brother with the um, red hat, what was your name again? Al. Al. Oh, Al. That's right. Just call him Al. Um, so, <laughs> so let me ask you this, Al. <laughs> I just lost my chain of thought. If you barter something, are you required to pay taxes? Uh, Let's say if you, um, you, you are mechanically inclined, right? And so, um, if you repaired my conveyance, right? And so, I gave you like $300, and you've done the same thing for Shenandoah, he gave you $500. Is that money taxable? Uh, I don't know. Someone help him out. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, section 83 of the tax code, uh, uh, cost is uh, deducted from, from profit. Section 83 of the tax code, and he just gave you the law. So no, if you barter something, it's not really taxable, right? So they usually tax what is referred to as income. What is it? You have your black law dictionary, y'all, y'all? What is income? And can you define that? Because sometimes they really um, start to swindle on words. OK, go ahead, Kayla. So remember, if you're bartering a service, it's not really taxable. <clears throat> so you could offer me a service, and if I give you some fiat or some green, well, they don't have greenbacks anymore, a promissory note. It's not really taxable if I bought it at service. But if I said that, you know, you paid me for it, then it becomes taxable because it's looked upon as income. So words are extremely important. Go ahead. Exchange. Two, the payment of a debt using a bill of exchange or credit rather than money, Black's Law 7th edition. Taking these two words together, it means reasonable to conclude that an exchange contract is a contract in which equivalent value is transferred between two parties under the terms of a contract. That's Black's Sef Black Dictionary, seventh edition. Also indicates that an exchange can include a bill of exchange. So what is a bill of exchange? A bill of exchange is a three-party instrument in which the first party draws an order for 
the payment of a sum. So there's an order right there. Go ahead. Certain on a second party for payment to a third party at a definite future time. Same as draft under UCC. A check is a demand bill of exchange. See also advance bill, baker's acceptance, blank bill, claim bill, draft, time bill. That's Black's Law 7th edition. So a bill of exchange is also called a draft. But what is a draft? A draft is a written order by the first party, called the drawer, instructing a second party, called the drawee, such as the bank, to pay a third party, called the payee. So the, the, does, this, does this actually kind of uh, take place when someone goes and purchases a house? Do you not have a buyer, a seller, and then the bank? So what does the bank typically do? He'll have Shenador come in and sign you know, a promissory note you know, or and apply for a loan and the loan's not even approved, but the bank will actually get those funds from his account and deposit it into the bank as an asset. So then when Shenandoah comes in a couple days later, he'll say, guess what, Shenandoah, you got approved for the loan. He has him sign again. So with that second payment, he's taking that and he's paying the seller. So Shenandoah is paying the seller and he's paying the bank. And then again, he's going to have Shenandoah come back and say, we're giving you this loan. You got to pay us back over the next 25 or 30 years. So, that, so he's paying three times. Go ahead. In order to pay a some certain money signed by a dry, drawer, payable on demand or at a definite time, and into order or bearer, an unconditional order drawn by a drawer or on drawee to the order of the payee, same as the bill of exchange, UCC statute three. 104. See also check, documentary draft, redraft, site draft, trade acceptance. That's Black's Law 5th edition. So these things are cited here because you can actually just look them up yourself. And you can see that this stuff is not made up. It's actually out there. You know, they put the information there, but it's not their responsibility to tell us that it's there. That's your responsibility. Right? So a bill of exchange is the same as a draft, and a check is a demand bill of exchange. So what is a bill of exchange? Um, Moore's brother, Moore's brother in the back. What is a bill of exchange? It's the same thing as a what? Oh, wait, got you. Okay, so a bill of exchange <clears throat> is the same as a draft, and a check is a demand bill of exchange. We are all familiar with a check, which is just a special form of a bill of exchange. It appears to be. So I have a question. I'll be interjected a lot. So. Um, <laughs> Let me ask Christian, he was in the real estate. So if I, let's say if I had um, a bank account with Chase, right, Christian, and um, I, because the bank deal with balances, right, so if I had an account and I withdrew $200 um, in my account, let's say I deposited 200, right, and I withdrew 300, and then I went in and trying to close the account, would the bank want me to close that account? Or would they say I have an outstanding balance? I think they would say you have outstanding balance. So that's what's key. They, they, they deal with balancing the books. So if I came up with that extra $100, um, if I deposit that into my account, would I have like a zero balance? Yeah. So would it be feasible to, to close the account then? Would that account be closed? I don't think it would be uh, logical to close it if you settled the balance. Right. So, let, let me, if bank, if bank accounts are really close, right, what, how is it possible for, because I used to do this, but I don't deal with it anymore. Anyone ever actually heard of the EFT? You know what that is? Yeah, electronic funds transfer. Right. So, you, you do that on what type of account? Close. An account that's supposedly closed, because bank accounts never close. So, there was one guy that was actually going, that I was working with, he's going around New Jersey, just going, to, he, he used up. But you gotta have the old check. He had some old checks on a closed account. He would go and deposit that in and withdraw funds from a so-called closed account. But he was doing it so, like, repetitiously, they eventually just took him in. But, I mean, he got a lot of fee out from doing that. So the accounts are never really closed, even if they tell you that the bank account is closed, it's never really closed. So go ahead, continue. It appears to be possible to use a bill of exchange to access what the government owes us, our exemption. 
Before you government owes us? What does the government owe us? Why do they owe us anything? Something to think about. Before you can use a VOE, there are several steps. VOE, so that's just the acronym for bill of exchange. There are several steps that should be completed. These include copyrighting your straw man name as a trade name, trademark. Why is this necessary? Why is it even necessary to do this? This is all bogus bull crap, right? Isn't that what the black robes say when you go to court? Ah, what do you, he got, all right, this is just sovereign stuff. This is all bogus, why are you following this? But why is it necessary to copyright the straw man's name? Right, so, um, right, it's kind of like you're, you're taking control of it. Like, see, a lot of people want to be complete sovereigns and they want, just want to live off of the grid. So you can't operate in commerce if you destroy, destroy that, right? Because uh, a corporation can't interact or interface with a living soul. They can't interact with a, a, a real man. So people that do that has to go totally off of the grid. So now you can no longer operate in commerce. That's not where I want to be. So you want to control the straw man, not destroy it. You can't destroy it because you didn't create it. They created it. The de facto state created it. And if you look at your birth certificate, it'll say that on it, that. That is property of the state. Right go ahead, go ahead. When uh, signing a security agreement between you, you and your straw man, filing a UCC-1 with both your birth state and your state of residence, and establishing an account with the Secretary of the Treasury. Each of these pieces is critical, and they must be done in a specific order. It means that the straw man was created by the government. Therefore, based upon the, prin the principle that someone who creates an entity owns the entity, the government owns the straw man. It is not clear exactly how, what kind of entity the straw man is. Some have suggested that it is a trust, while others say it's a corporation, so a corporation of one. For our purposes, it does not matter. It does, it does, what does matter is that we must take control of the straw man, both its name and its finances and assets. We can take control without taking ownership. By copyrighting a straw man- well, How come we don't want to own it? Well, why don't we want to own it? But you take on liability. Right, yeah. you become a surety. And we can't own it because we didn't create it, is that correct? Or we can control it, first in line, first in time. Go ahead. By copyrighting your straw man's name as a trademark, trade name or trademark, you will take control of the use of the straw man's name, but not the entity. A common law copyright is the type of copyright we use for this purpose. You have the right to copyright the straw man's name because it was created from your true name, which is your full birth name printed in upper and lower case letters. So the brother from New Jersey, the, yeah, the Blue Ferrino, uh, or the Schwarzenegger. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, let me ask you about this. Um, so, why do we even want to um, copyright the straw man's name? Well, why is that even relevant? From my current level of understanding, if uh, people use it, and you control it, right. you have the ability, I guess, to control how they use it, or if they do. Right. So, yeah, go ahead, buddy. You, you can sue them. You right. Can use right. There you go, right? It, it's kind of like, so, if he had music, right? And you went, and anyone actually ever upload something to YouTube, and, and someone's, you, you use someone else's actually music, then you get this thing where you got a um, strike because you use someone else's music. So you could either actually um, allow them to get paid off of it, or you got to take it down. Same thing, when someone uses a name that you've actually copyrighted, you've actually taken control of that name. So that's kind of interesting. So what if you're pulled over like Shenandoah was, right? on a um, traffic um, stop, and this constable on patrol decides to write down that name. If he has that name copyrighted, can he not bring a charge against him for using that name without his permission? Yes, you can. But people don't think that way. They don't think they're in a box. Go ahead. So I mean, so anytime a constable on patrol pulls you over, you should be excited. Because that should be a payday for you if you know how to use it. No, I'm serious. Because if he's using a copyrighted name, hey, of course, sure. Well, he's writing that, hey, you better be careful before you write that name down. <laughs> I'm going to be the one to snatch your food off of your team. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For example, John Quincy Public, the names that you would copyright would include all spelling variations of your true name, except the true name itself. So, for example, and capital, all capital letters, John Quincy Public, lowercase John Quincy Public, 
John Q. Yeah, hey, you don't have to read over that. She, it's just pretty much the all capitals name and all derivatives thereof. Any kind of way that they will write it. Sometimes, and, and don't make a mistake about this, because someone got a um, presentment in the mail and they said, Taza Doc, my name was actually written in upper and lower case. I don't get it. I said, well, don't get so caught up on the name. Is there something in front of the name, like Mr.? And he was like, yeah. I said, well, there's a fiction right there. They put Mr. in front of it. Was Mr. on your birth certificate? No. So they're creating a fiction simply by adding Miss or Mr. Go ahead. The true name itself can't be copyrighted. The copyright notice is either recorded with the county recorder in your state or published in a newspaper once a week for four weeks. The copyright name has to be established before you can file the UCC-1 because the filing is done using the copyrighted name as the debtor on the UCC-1. Corporations and the government can only deal with legal fictions, so all contracts and official records are in the straw man's name. So let's stop right there for a second. This is why they really couldn't deal with him. I mean, they wanted to see a picture ID to say, is this you? They wanted to create joinder with the straw man. Since they didn't have that, they don't have anything. They can't bring anything against the living soul unless you just consent. Go ahead. Title to all property, bank accounts, stock accounts, licenses, and permits, and everything else is all held in the straw man's name. Once the straw man's name has been copyrighted, you can create a security agreement. The security agreement is a contract. So let's stop. So the way that I do this is that when I file my UCC-1, which is actually a financial lien, I, like, acknowledge my security agreement number on the UCC-1. So instead of listing all of that information on the UCC-1, I reference my security agreement and I just copyright the security agreement and keep it in the safe somewhere. So now I have a lien against all of its property because nothing belongs to me. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just like the a paramount security holder over you know all of its property. Everything registered and unregistered to the store man. Go ahead. The security agreement is a contract between you, the living soul, and the straw man. This contract pledges everything that the straw man now owns or will ever own to you. This is reasonable because without you, the living soul, the straw man would own nothing. After the security agreement has been executed, follow UCC-1 and various other documents to become a secure party to creditor. In order for the UCC-1 filing to be legal, there must be an agreement between the parties. The security agreement is a contractual evidence upon which the UCC-1 filing is based. The UCC-1 filing is a public record of a lien that exists upon all assets of the straw man. To secure the debt, the straw man owes you for your labor. The priority of this lien is based upon first line, first in time is first in line. This means that the first lien filed has priority over all subsequent liens. So let's stop right there because what this goes to say, let's say um, you have a conveyance, a, a car, automobile, right? If you had that VIN number listed on your security agreement and you have that commercial lien against it, can so-and-so come in and take it? Not legally, they can. Because first in line, first in time, you have a lien against that conveyance, that car. You understand? Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Good. Anyone who has a lien with lower priority can't get paid until the first priority lien holder is satisfied. 